Uh, hi, uh, today I'd like to go over uh, a few uh, a few tricks in YAML that can help you uh, reduce the size of your configuration files and uh, just uh, keep you sane. Uh, so here you can see I have a very simple YAML file which just uh, which uh, just has a, a key hello and a key YAML and uh, some text in it, and you can see that. Uh, on the side on the on the window on the side uh, I have a, a command line that uh, parses that uh, that file and outputs uh, what uh, a program might, might see when uh, it parses it so here you can see that uh, we get uh, hello and what we expect so uh, the first thing I'd like to go over are uh, inline inline dict and uh, and lists you probably know that uh, you can uh, have a dictionary like that, but you can also have a, a, a list uh, with uh, the minus sign. Uh, and you can actually, there is actually a shorter syntax uh, for like small lists sometimes uh, or small dictionary, it's useful. So you can uh, write it uh, like this, for example, uh, where this will be uh, the same, uh, it will still be a, a, a list. Uh, as before, uh, yeah, say, same thing, and uh, you can do that uh, same thing for dictionaries where it's like a pretty similar syntax where you just put uh, curly braces and uh, and uh, still the, the dots, and uh, again it's uh, it's the same result. Uh, that's a small one, but it uh, it can save uh, space. Uh, Next, uh, I'd like to cover multi-line uh, strings. So, yeah, a weird way to do multi-line strings would be to like have an escaped character in there, which I don't even know if that even works. I never did it. Yeah, that doesn't even even work. Uh, I get you could. I guess you could put it uh, in in quotes. Does that work? Uh, yeah, that does work. Okay, and then you you could do something. Uh, like like this yeah that that works but it's not pretty uh, at all and so uh, you can you can make it uh, much nicer so the way you do that is uh, you put a pipe just after the the colon uh, and then you just write your text on multiple lines uh, oops, like this let's say uh, and as you will be able to see, uh, it has kept the new lines and you have a, a nice indentation based uh, multi-line strings. Uh, and there are uh, a few like obscure thing about uh, multi-line strings. One of them is you can, instead of a pipe character, you can have a, a I don't know, a greater than character like this. And this will actually uh, uh, still allow you to do this syntax, uh, but it will uh, actually concatenate them on uh, one line. Uh, so I can show that, and as you can see, it removed all the uh, uh, new line character and replaced them with spaces. This is uh, very useful if you have, uh, for example, uh, a very long command like uh, load file something something very long dot uh, dot bin and then a uh, uh, a URL that is also very long uh, and yeah because a command you cannot have new space in it but you can have space and that way you can uh, you can uh, put it on multiple lines and it looks clean and uh, but uh, yeah you're still able to execute it uh, so let's go back to this uh, like there is a few minor details about multi-line strings, which are uh, so in that it will uh, that way it will still keep a new line at the very end, but if you do uh, a minus sign, it will remove that uh, that that new new line at the end. And uh, yeah, same thing for uh, the pipe. If you have a pipe like this, it will add a new line at the end, and if you have a minus after the pipe, it will remove. Uh, it will keep the new lines in between the, the real lines, but it will remove the last one. Uh, and there is a, a thing that I never use, but that exists, which is a, a plus, which uh, here uh, 
uh, yeah, it will keep like all the new lines after. So exam here, uh, for example, I have two empty lines here. Uh, if I remove them, it's the same, but like I can add like a bunch of empty new lines and it will keep them. Uh, never used it, but maybe it can be useful. Uh, next, uh, anchors. So that allows you to uh, uh, avoid to repeat yourself. So uh, you can create a, a key called foo, and then let's say there, there is a bunch of, of like personal information, for example, name and then age, uh, like this. And then in uh, another key, you can actually, uh, no, you can declare an anchor uh, like this with an percent and then a name. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be the same, but it's nice. I'd like to, to keep them the same as the key so they, that it's clear. Uh, and then here you can extend it to, with the multiply sign, like, like so. And so this will give you, this will actually put name and age inside uh, of hello. And uh, yeah, as you can see, hello got the same keys as foo. And of course, you can imagine that if you do uh, uh, a thing by and uh, here, it will put the content in both hello and by, and so you can uh, avoid uh, to repeat yourself. Uh, and uh, that's a bit uh, of a limited use case because uh, actually if you want to declare, like let's say I want to declare a, a test key here and uh, have it of uh, the value of 42 inside of hello, you can probably guess that, yeah, it doesn't work. But there is a way to make it work, which is uh, a bit of a weird, weird syntax, but it's YAML after all. So uh, you can do this, which will, uh, this is a special key that uh, says uh, extend uh, this anchor, basically. Uh, and so that will actually merge uh, foo and hello. So that's hello contains test, but also the, the value of the anchors. And so if you do that, you can see that it has a name and age, but also test. Uh, and uh, a thing to note with that is that if I, let's say I have a, I also want to have a test here that is uh, actually uh, 24 instead of uh, 42. Uh, it will actually keep the, the one that is already declared instead of uh, overwriting it with, uh, with the anchor. You can see it uh, kept the 42 and not the 24. And that's uh, actually quite uh, a bit useful if you want to do some kind of kind of inheritance in, uh, in YAML, it can, uh, it can be useful. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for uh, the few tricks in YAML that helped me. And that's like for YAML itself, like I know that some parser do some more fancy stuff, but that's like, the basic stuff that you can uh, reuse like everywhere that YAML is used. Uh, so now I'd like to go over a few caveats of YAML when you use it uh, uh, inside a configuration file like for uh, GitLab CI or uh, Docker Compose. Uh, so for example, for uh, GitLab CI, each of the top level keys is uh, actually a job. So you have a job and a script and then uh, like uh, a, few, uh, a few a few stuff ici up here and uh, here that would be uh, that would be a job job number two uh, but that means that this those keys are actually interpreted as job names and uh, that means that if you want to do like the the anchor thing I just uh, to spoke about. Uh, you cannot do that. You cannot create a variable foo that has uh, an anchor on it, and then let's say uh, there's a before script that uh, that gets uh, I don't know. Let's see uh, host uh, host name like this. Uh, and if you want to do that, GitLab will uh, complain because uh, it will think that foo is actually a job. But uh, usually those uh, those programs allow you to like. Ignore the, ignore the top level key in a way uh, so that if you put, for example, in GitLab CI, like it's program specific, of course, but if you put a dot before uh, the key, it will, 
it, it will treat it treat, treat this as a as something it has to ignore and so here you can actually uh, reuse it and uh, gitlab won't complain that foo is a job uh, there is the same thing in uh, docker compose where uh, docker compose you have uh, you have uh, services and then you have uh, i don't know uh, ser service uh, a that has uh, an image and uh, whatever and then uh, i don't know command uh, ls like this and then there is a service b uh, that has uh, like get uh, something uh, and here if you would like to have uh, again uh, an anchor like let's say you want a command configuration between uh, all the services and you want to do that as an anchor for example you want to do a restart uh, always uh, on all your jobs and you want to also uh, uh, I don't know let's say you just want that uh, and you want to like have this common thing everywhere uh, to do like like kind of inherit inheritance like uh, like I said uh, it won't work because it doesn't like services is a predefined like keyword that uh, docker compose will search for and so uh, it will treat uh, common as a, as the same uh, and so to avoid this uh, docker compose allows you to do x then a dash and then this will be treated as a, a regular yaml key uh, one last thing i would like to go over is uh, that there is boolean in uh, in yaml so if you do uh, who, uh, true true is not a string it's actually uh, it's actually the value the value uh, true same with false there is also yes i think that is oh no that doesn't work okay that's uh, some weird program allow yes and no it's good that this uh, doesn't allow it so if you put true it's actually the boolean value true and i know that in some configuration k in, in some configurations they actually uh, expect the string true and so that uh, can be a bit tricky sometimes and you need to put uh, true between quotes that's so that uh, the program understands it and uh, yeah so that's it for those uh, few tricks in uh, in yaml i hope uh, it helped you and uh, see you next time